Hey, Chicago, what do you say? It's the CHGO Cubs podcast presented by DraftKings, America's top-rated sportsbook. Make sure you download the app and use the promo code CHGO when you sign up. Luke Stuckmeyer and Cody Del Mendo with you. Ryan Herrera will join us from Arizona and Sloan Park in just a little bit. Uh, happy Wednesday. If you're in Arizona, you're complaining about 40-mile-an-hour winds. If you're in Chicago, you're complaining about rain, ice, and sleet. So uh, <laughs> take your pick. Either way, hashtag vibe with us cody it's we the hashtag vibing. we've created a hashtag sweeping america it's hashtag sweeping. vibe with us it's all over I, the world now i love to see i love to see the hashtag in the youtube chat i need to see it more on social media though like i i need i need more hashtag vibe with us on I do. twitter i need it in my instagram comments i need it everywhere hell do it on facebook if you're so if you're cool enough to be my friend on facebook which some of you are and some of you aren't but it, you get what i'm called- saying luke it, it, Cody, if the if the Cubs are the first team to ten wins this season, the hashtag vibe with us will become a platform for a presidential election. That's how Absolutely. fast it will be stolen by somebody. Yes, some people steal it. Some people would get behind it too because it's vibe with us. Like that's right. Positive, we're, we're positivity right here, right? So it's one uh, of the greatest things I've ever come up with. I'll be honest <laughs> with you. Hashtag vibe with us is probably top five accomplishments in my career. I look at it and I say that's close to perfect. Well, who's yeah. going to top that vibe? Um, <laughs> so we got a lot to talk about. We're going to talk a little bit about um, Jamison Tyone at the top of the show here. Uh, something he's working on, whether or not he can reach his potential with the Cubs, because he's had you know a lot of potential and has just sort of reached it in his major league career. But he looks like a good signing. Uh, we're going to talk about the new Fangraphs Top 100 that came out, which is a little bit different than some of the other lists, but you also know how I feel about that. And um, we're also going to hear from Theo Epstein potentially in this show, and Ryan's going to join us live. So let's get let's first remind everybody, go ahead and make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel for CHGO Sports. Don't miss out on anything. That way, when the shows are ready to go, you don't miss it. When the videos hit, you know they're there. When the shorts are there, you go to them. You're not missing anything, right? Absolutely. And and of course, we want everybody to be a diehard because we want everybody to have all the content that Ryan and Vinny and all the great writers are putting out at all CHG. On top of on top of twenty percent off all the merch, so you can get this hoodie for twenty percent off. I mean, perfect. Uh, me and me and Stuck matching today unintentionally. 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 You know what that means? You know of intentional when you unintentionally awesome. match. Hashtag vibe with us. Yeah. That's what that is. That's uh. <laughs> it's an obvious hashtag vibe with us. All right, let's let's get to Tyone because you know there's a lot of different players we we've talked about Cody that are potential quote unquote X factors, right? There's there's yeah. so many guys that could flip the script for this Cubs team. And when we talked to Dan Plezak in yesterday's podcast, which if you haven't heard it, make sure you go back and listen to it. A lot of great stuff from the quirky lefty. When you listen to him talk about some of these guys, I started getting a little uh, goosebumpy. I, you know, I started, he wasn't just blowing smoke because Dan has to cover every major league team. And yes, he'll be on marquee a few times, mm. but I do know that he doesn't just blow smoke at people to make them feel good. So I, I trust that he is excited about some of the moves. One of the guys he likes is Jamison Tyone. Could he be an X factor? We don't know. You know, we, we talked about whether or not he could be as high as a two on this team. We we thought I've heard Ryan Dempster say in marquee, he thinks he has ace potential if he can reach it. Mm-hmm. Um, realistically, what is your expectation for Tyone? If, if you had to just say, you know what, this is what I think he's going to be this year. I think the floor is a number three starter. And I agree with Ryan Dempster that the ceiling is he could be the number one starter by the end of the year because uh, you know, adding the sweeper slider that we're going to hear him and Ryan talk about. And just that pitch lab being able to unlock some of that potential that he, we haven't seen. And um, I know that's optimistic. And I know the pessimistic people will be like, well, this guy has never lived up to it. And he's been in the league for this many years and this and that. Well, he was also in New York the last couple of years. And he pitched pretty well for a fan base that boos people if they aren't good and a media market that's a lot more strict than than us here in Chicago, in my opinion. So um, he's coming from a tough, tough, tough place to play if you don't have the cojones to deal with it. 
And uh, yeah, he owns up to when things aren't good and when, and, and, and he doesn't make excuses. Yeah. And I like that about him. So I think we'll more likely get something in the middle between a number three and an ace. But I think that, again, that's the ceiling. That's the floor. I'm hoping that we get somewhere at least around a number two where you're looking at him, Stro and Steele, and you're like, you feel pretty good with all three. And I think if this team is going to make the playoffs, one of those three is really going to emerge as that said ace. Um We just got to watch it play out. No one knows right now and no one can tell you what's going to happen. But I really do have a lot of optimism related to Tyone. And a lot of it has to do with Cubs coaching and the pitch lab and all those guys, because we've seen them do it with all these other dudes. So um, I'm excited for him. Yeah. And I, I also think it is possible that at the end of the season, we'll look back and say, you know what? This team didn't have a true ace, just like it didn't going into the season. Uh, you might just have some solid starters in there, which has kind of been what Tyone has really been described as by most mm. major league fans, right? When you hear his name and he's in the game, you know a scrub's not throwing. You you know it's a guy that's got potential to be really good on any given outing, um, but he also hasn't been the ace of the rotation. So he's been – and frankly, there's nothing wrong with that. If the, if the Cubs could even just add – the average of what he's been, even if he doesn't exceed what he's done in his past, even if he gives you what he has been in the past and can be healthy, he's boosted the Cubs rotation. So Ryan, Ryan sat down with Tyone in Arizona at a later time. We're going to play the entire interview for you. Uh, But I just want to focus on this sweeping slider thing where he's developing the new pitch. This is Ryan with Jameson Tyone, free agent addition to the Cubs, and and Tyone talking about his potentially new pitch. The talk of spring, and you kind of did it yourself, but also uh, the sweeping slider is something that you decided to develop this offseason. Yeah. I'm curious what went into, in your mind, what went into the decision to you know try to develop that pitch? So a lot of things. Um, I'd say number one is like, Honestly, I just feel like I have another gear that I can hit, and I feel like some low-hanging fruit was like, let's make the slider better, sure. whether it's a new grip or whether it's like just improving the slider I had. Like, that was something I already had in my mind. Like, a lot of the big home runs I gave up last year was on my slider. Mm-hmm. Um, I had some good stretches with it, but I also had some bad stretches with it. Um, so I just want to eliminate that, like, inconsistency mm-hmm. factor, um, just add another weapon. Um, so... It's worth a shot. I like the early returns on it. I'm excited to take it out in games and see what we got. Um, but in a perfect world, it's a, another weapon and swing and miss pitch to righties. And, like, I'm not afraid to try it. And if it doesn't work out and the hitters give me feedback that it's not good or it's not working, like, cool. I can always go back to the slider I threw. It's a super simple grip, yeah. easy to remember. So, um, yeah, it's been just fun to experiment and try it out. Yeah. And with that sweeper, obviously, it, it sort of takes two to tango. Like, you have to kind of approach the coaches and, and talk about it. Yep. Um, but they also seem to be pretty on board with it as soon as you sign. Uh, what did they tell you going into that process of, as far as developing this new pitch? What was in, in their mind? What did they see? Um, yeah, I mean, I, on, I think they saw the same things I did. I think, like, we lined up there. They kind of approached me with it, and they were like, are you, you know, okay with trying okay. this out in a bullpen? Here's the grip. Here's like a couple cues. Here what you here's what you want the ball to do. Just if you're not opposed to it, go out, try it, send us video. Mm-hmm. We can just see where this takes us. Um, so I literally like a couple hours after I talked to Tommy and Moscos went through my bullpen, threw yeah. some pretty good ones, <laughs> and I was like, this is something that's worth continuing okay. and, and trying to make work. But um, it really wasn't like that deep, honestly. It was just like you down to try this. We think it'll make your stuff better, sure. your pitch package better. We think it'll help you and. I already trust these guys, so I'm on board with it. <laughs> and and if you haven't noticed, they have little mini microphones, little yeah. little tiny mini microphones. But I need you know, I'm gonna need to borrow that whenever uh, me and our social media director uh, Casey go out into the wild in Wrigleyville right. before opening day. Um, <laughs> that said, his leg looks be- bigger than Ryan, as in that's what Shane. Saying. I saw Shane yeah. said that, and, and Dub <laughs> saying uh, slider going to be sliding, slider going to be sliding this season. <laughs> slider going to be sliding. <laughs> I I would have been 
I'm excited about this in that he's working through it. Uh, yeah. When we play the full interview, you'll find out how this has been progressing uh, against live batters uh, in in Mesa at Sloan Park. Uh, so that's coming up probably next week, maybe uh, you know shortly after that. But I think we'll probably play the whole thing next week. Um, I'm just a little more hesitant to get excited about it, though, after talking to Dan Plezak yesterday about how it can be good and bad, <laughs> depending on, you know, he's like, yeah. he tinkered his entire career with pitches and with different things and different ways of doing it. And he says they all, all the pitchers will talk to each other, but if a guy's going well, it can throw him off. The good news is he's trying this now, right? Like, mm -hmm. Go ahead and throw it as many times as you want in Cactus League play. And like he said, if it doesn't work, forget about it for the whole season. Or if you're struggling halfway through the season, revisit that if you need to. That's probably the best game plan for this. Yeah, I mean, the reason that what Dan said doesn't necessarily frighten me, you know what I mean, is that right. I just remember what Tyone said about, you know, just signing with the Cubs in general. And – Again, I'm just going to keep going back to that. Like, that's how I'm going to look at it until we actually see him in a Cubs uniform pitching. I mean, maybe we'll be able to see that slider in action this spring. Um, and I, I, you know, if it does some some cool things, then I think that's only going to build his confidence. So, but I, I, at the same time, I, I get where you're coming from. Uh, but <clears throat> you want to talk about other Cubs that have added pitches. I mean, we talked about Keegan Thompson and it added ends last year about him adding a pitch in season. And it was what a slider. So yeah. again, these Cubs pitching coaches, uh, the, the entire pitching staff uh, coaching wise is unreal. I, they should be, in my opinion, they should be getting like 10 year contracts. I, that, that that's how, that's how much confidence I have in those guys right now, because they, they have done wonders, things that we have never seen, things that we never saw during the golden era. You had, if you would have, if they would have had this pitching, this coach, this pitching staff in terms of coaching uh, and and player development during the golden era, the core would probably still be here. So. Yeah, I was gonna. I, I just want to jump in to say, Cody, you're. It's, it's like testament to uh, Jed and Carter Hawkins and and just the whole organization. And this was like, you know this was what haunted them for so many years. And so, you know, they've honestly turned it around like pretty fast, you know, and it's pretty crazy to just hear pitchers recognize that and like view Chicago as a place they want to come pitch because they think that the Cubs staff can get the most out of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. hundred, hundred percent, Joey. I mean, Chicago for pitching on the North side used to be like the bears are for wide receivers. I believe it was <laughs> Moose and Muhammad who once said, or maybe, maybe it was Brandon Marshall, Chicago is where wide receivers go to die. <laughs> like, <laughs> because you never have a quarterback. So yeah. that's why we've never had a good wide receiver because we've never had a quarterback. So mm -hmm. that that's kind of the way I think on the outside, people always looked at the Cubs. They never had enough pitching, right? Like peak Jake Arietta helped turn that around. The, the 16 mm -hmm. Cubs helped turn that around. Developing... Kyle Hendricks, even though he wasn't their draft pick, helped turn that around. But it's then when it faltered again, this has been the next step. And I don't know how long you can hang on to all those guys, but you can start by paying them. Like the, the first way to get somebody to stay is by overpaying them. If they see that they want to be something else and you don't have that opening, we may have seen that on the hitting side of things too, right? Like mm -hmm. we keep – we just saw the Cubs replace their hitting coach. Is it because the guys below, they thought we can't afford to lose these two guys. We've got to keep promoting. We've got to keep them happy as long as we can keep them happy. Right. Um, well, know, that that I, may I like, be the case. I just like the way it's trending. Right. Well, I should have mentioned, you know, Hadavi when we had him on mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of those other guys, they're all guys that started in the minors and have been promoted to the major league right. coaching staff. So they, they've been within the organization for a long time. And, you know, again, I, I, I know I'm giving them a lot of love here, but they and then they still have a lot to prove as far as like we're talking up all the pitching. We're talking up James and Tyon. And if we go into his first start and he gives up seven runs and gets shelled, people are going to come back to this and they're going to yell at us and all that. But like 
you can just look at multiple examples from last season and in even even small parts of 2021 and 2020 if you want to just specifically look at the bullpen but last year you you saw it out of some some starting pitchers and of course the bullpen so <clears throat> again what i'm getting at here is they have to go out there and 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 perform the players do uh but if things don't go right at least for one start i at this point i feel pretty good about the next start coming out i don't think that there's a pitcher on the staff that you're afraid of you know, not really having it for a consistent amount of time. And the only one I feel like maybe is Kyle Hendricks, and that's only because of health and yeah. the fact that he really just hasn't been very good the last year and a half. But you take in his experience, you take in, you know, everything he's done for the organization, his, uh, you know, his, all that stuff. You, you know, you can have some hope that maybe he can get back to a glimpse of what 2020 was and, and before. Uh, but – if he's the only one that I can name and say that I don't that or feel like I he's the only one I can name and feel like I'm I'm a little iffy about in terms of just being productive. Like I'm not asking for a stuff. I'm asking for just productive, giving us just getting outs. If he's the only one, then I'm I'm feeling pretty good about the pitching staff. And again, I know a lot of people will probably look at me and I'm just, you know. Being a homer and I'm, you know, being way too optimistic, I, I don't care. Oh, no, I, sorry. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just don't I just, care. I'm sorry. The, question, the question is, we were asking is, could could this new sweeper slider really help him reach his potential? I hope so. But I also mm -hmm. don't believe it's the only thing that could help him reach his potential or improve on the pitcher that he's been into now his Cubs career. I think because of – the pitch lab and all the all the reasons that he came here, that's not going to be their first suggestion to let's try this. There'll be grip changes. There'll be in-season adjustments, just like there would be with other teams. But I trust the people that are speaking those words more than I have in a long time. And, yeah. and they're coming from multiple voices, and they're coming from uh, different directions. Some are coming from – analytics some are coming from video work some are coming from the old pitching coach eyeball test we see you doing this let's try this so instead of just one way of doing it there's two three four different ways for them to approach and try trying to get this guy back on top i do want to point out that tyone was the number two pick way back in the 2010 draft can you tell me the top three picks in that draft do you have any idea because it's a it's a really good top three, but there's also a lesson to be learned from that 2010 draft. I I couldn't. Who are the yeah, teams? Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't either. I, I looked it up. To be totally <laughs> oh, okay. honest, I looked it up. So there's nothing to be said poorly about you there. Uh, number one was Bryce Harper in 2010. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Then Tyone to the Pittsburgh Pirates at number two. Obviously, he's turned into a, a very very good starting pitcher. Number three. Manny Machado to the Orioles. Mm. That's a pretty good top three. The Cubs at number 16 took Hayden Simpson. Okay, that didn't work out. And <laughs> who? <laughs> yeah. And uh at number 23, Christian Yelich to the Marlins, your favorite player. Ugh. Um, it just it just goes to show you again that like one, two, and three, while that doesn't usually work out in major league baseball, in this particular year, it did. But in the next segment, we're going to talk about prospects and more prospect lists and how people get excited and stuff. Just remember that the Cubs took Hayden Simpson. They were way more excited about him than they were Christian Yelich, who went 23. So just because somebody's 16 on a list doesn't mean they're going to be 16 in the real world. And just because somebody's number one on the list doesn't mean they're going to be number 100 in the world. It's just a list, and it's only a list. And that was the Hendry era. So just saying. He it did was, he did draft Javi Bias. I'll give him. He that. sure did. He sure did. And uh anyways, uh, we'll we'll get to that list in a second. But I, I think it's interesting that it's slightly different. I just found it fascinating that Tyone was actually ahead of Manny Machado and he was ahead of Christian Yelich. Yeah. It's too bad he didn't fall to number 16 and we could have had him a long time ago, but <laughs> 
Yeah. I digress. Uh, Chicago, we've already got you covered for the best sports coverage for your favorite teams. Now get fitted out in the best sports gear round. Foco has you covered from Soldier Field to the fan cave in your basement. North side, south side, hoodies, slippers, signs, bobbleheads, everything in between. Get decked out like Damar with apparel from the sports leader in sports merch and collectibles, Foco. If you're looking for that perfect gift for your football fan in your life, how about Foco having you covered with a hoodie to fight the Lake Michigan breeze? More importantly, how about a hoodie or a jacket to get you fitted out for opening day, which is how many days away, Cody? 36? 36 days. 36 days away. You know it's going to be cold. Check out Foco.com or click the link in our description below for all non-presale items. Use the promo code CHGO for 10% off right now. And Game Time is the hottest new ticketing site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. If you've ever dreamed of sitting in the seats you never thought you could, 50-yard line, courtside, behind home plate, floor seats to a concert, it's possible with the Game Time app. The biggest last-minute price drops can be found on the seats you never thought you could afford. You won't find a better deal this season on Cubs tickets coming up or some of those concerts coming up at Wrigley Field like Bruce Springsteen. Created by the fans for the fans, guaranteeing the lowest price. If you love CHGO, you're going to love game time. And the best way to support us is by buying your tickets through the link in the description. Join over 15 million people who have downloaded the game time app and score the best seats to all your favorite events. Uh, our boss. The chat. The chat. Kevin uh, Kada got his tickets to uh, Springsteen already. Did he? Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, I know you don't want to go. You'd rather go if Bon Jovi was. No, 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 no. Well, that is true. But if you were, if somebody out there in the chat, Michael Collada, Barb, Shane, Greg, whoever it might be, wants to buy me a ticket for free, I'll consider going for a little bit. <laughs> Got Corey's in shambles if he's listening right now. Um, I just want to point out, though, Shane said that DeGrom went in the ninth round that season uh, or in that draft. Wow. Um, which is wild. And then uh, Stephen. Uh, a new name. I haven't seen that name in a while in our, or really ever in this chat. So welcome. Bailot. Uh, Bailot. Bailot. Yeah. Be uh, he, he said in 2010, the the Cubs drafted players who would sign what they offered. So I do, I will say that I, the way that front offices are operating when it comes to the MLB draft now is completely different than in 2010, in my opinion. So and, and more and more fans are paying more attention to it as well, which is exciting. I, Never thought I'd see the day, but I mean, during the MLB draft last year, Cubs fans were freaking, you know, talking about it a lot. So, um, I mean, wild. everything, everything's changed since 2010. Our world has changed. <laughs> Television has changed. Yeah. Media has changed. The way we bring in information has changed. The game of baseball has changed. And, you know, Theo's trying to change it even more. We'll get to that in a little bit, mm. but, um, all right, well, so fan graphs is the latest one. I don't know how many of these we've done here on the podcast, but I feel like anybody's got a list. We're going to tell you about the list. Yeah, um, the list. <laughs> and and I know fan graphs is what Corey and Brendan always want to go with. They they want to yeah. stick everything is fan graphs. F war. That's <laughs> what I'm told it's called. It's the fan graphs top 100 prospects were released this morning. So the Cubs have four guys in the top 100. Pete Crow Armstrong at 14. Kevin Alcantara at 73, but that's where it gets different. Sometimes we've seen just those two guys on the list. Mm -hmm. This top 100 actually includes Hayden Wesneski as still a prospect because you know what? He could start possibly the season back at triple a and Christian Hernandez at number 100. That's a guy who just turned 19 years old. And we we've talked about signing Dansby Swanson in seven more years. And I said, yeah, the perfect scenario for Dansby Swanson's career is that he's great for like three or four years. And then Christian Hernandez forces your hand like the Astros did with Correa to make a decision. And maybe that means Dansby Swanson becomes a third baseman. Maybe that means Nico Horner changes to the outfield, whatever the situation may be, what you really want for development in your organization is a guy like Christian Hernandez or Ed Howard, who, by the way, we saw taking uh, some grounders and, and out in the field from our photographs that we like to check out from Rich Biesterfeld, our buddy mm -hmm. out there in Arizona. Uh, so he's recovering from his hip surgery. 
But you want one of those guys to explode onto the scene and force your hand at the major league level. That's that's how you keep rolling it over from one generation to the next. That's how you go quickly from the Rizzo, Bryant, Baez era into the next one without mm. there being a teardown is by that consistent development. So hopefully the Cubs have that in their head. Hopefully the way they've been drafting re, you know, recently with kind of spreading out some of those, not just drafting, but their trade partners spreading out the prospects they're bringing back over time. Not everybody's the same age, so you have to just get them all here at one time. Mm -hmm. They're developing. Here's a guy that's 19 years old. He's already in the top 100. I saw some pictures and video. I saw I joined Twitter uh, this week. Oh. Christian Hernandez. So welcome yeah. to the world, Christian Hernandez. I tweeted him uh, last night. Watching him do that swing is – his swing is – it's fun to watch. I can sit there and watch it for at least a few minutes. Um, I think that's what I quoted. quoted now, he's an signing. international signee, correct? Correct, yes. Yeah. His, and, his and, brother uh, is also signed with the Cubs, I'm pretty yes. sure. So – uh, you know, so my takeaway from this list is where the fuck is Brennan Davis? <laughs> and uh, well, that's a question. Where where is where is Brennan Davis, and why don't they? Why do they hate Brennan Davis? It, no respect. No Barb's respect. Right. No respect. Man, I, and it all like it's not like he played his way out of it. No. He was just hurt. Right. He was just hurt. And again, I don't I don't read into the rankings as much as some people. And it is what it is. He's in the top fifty for MLB Pipeline. Uh, he's been, he's been in the top 50 for other ones that we've talked about, or at least in the top 100, right? When he's, he's not, dropped, but, he's dropped in all of them because of right. the injury, which I'm not sure is fair, but it's understandable. Right. But and I don't know about out Hayden of top Wisniewski 100. hasn't been in any top one. This is the first time we've seen Hayden Wisniewski in any top 100. And we've actually, maybe not live on the show, but I know in the office or just, you know, talking in general is like. I can't believe Wisniewski hasn't been able to sneak into the top 100 just based off the month he had at the major league level last year. One hundred percent. Yeah. So like, it is, whatever. Who cares? I don't. I don't care at the end of the day. But yeah, I mean, it's kind of like when we were talking about Brennan Davis, whether it was last week or the week before. I think we had a, we did a whole segment on asking like, are are people like. Is, do people disrespect Brennan Davis or have they forgotten about Brennan Davis? Right. And again, this guy was a top 20 prospect in all of baseball at one point. At this point last year, before we knew about the back thing on the MLB pipeline, he was a top 20 prospect. These are the same, the same, like it was like 13 or number 13, number 14, something like that on their top 100. So I, it's, I don't know what fan graphs to see him. I, I'd love to know, but. I'm excited to see him play this year, and especially this spring, because he he you want to talk about X factors, Luke. That guy could be an X factor. Yeah. If if this team is good. If this team is good in June and we're vibing and we're winning games that like you that the old Cubs would have lost, and you bring up bring him up and have that bat be a presence in this lineup, that's that's like a season changing type thing if he performs. So right. I'm excited to see what he can, what he does in the chances he gets this spring. And I know he struggled early last season uh, at, at the minor league level. And we were kind of like, you know, what's, what's going on? Why isn't he here? Why is he struggling uh, when you looked at the numbers, but I'm just going to, maybe it's, it's stupid or, you know, crazy of me, but I'm just going to assume it had to do with his back hurt. Yeah. His back was a problem. I don't think he forgot how to play baseball. I don't think he forgot or, or lost all of the athletic ability that made all of the scouts look at him and say, well, that's a top 25 prospect in baseball. I don't think that happened. So if the back is healed, which he's telling us it's healed, and they've solved whatever issue there was that wasn't structural, mm -hmm. and he feels healthy, we're going to see this spring in Cactus League action what kind of player is. I, I liked his swagger. I liked his confidence in some of the first comments where he's like, I didn't come here to not make a team. Right. I want to make it tough on these guys. And you know what? I hope that he also looks at some of these lists, uses a little extra motivation. Like everybody's forgotten him. He went, mm -hmm. he went from can't miss to out of the top 100. Right. And we'll it's just a list. It's, it's just, just a list. A list. And also, I know we like to say all the time about, you know, these guys are just prospects, this and that. But I do think that 
Brennan Davis, who was, again, a top 20 prospect and now getting all this disrespect, I do think that it does play a factor into his season. I do, I do think that it's something that he'll use to for motivation. Not that he needs any motivation, honestly. I mean, the guy didn't play last year, and people were starting to think – are starting to wonder if he can even – even people are saying he's injury prone, <laughs> even right. though last year was right. the first year he was, like, seriously ever hurt. So, you know – I, I look for he's I think me and you both agree on on him being the most intriguing player to watch in the spring, at least. Yeah, for sure. And and Garrett uh, Johnson in the chat uh, makes a great point. He says, you know, they still have a Maya and Marquez who were were top 100 guys, too. And, you know, they've been moved off the list because of injuries. In their case, I understand what's going on because those have been multiple injuries, multiple mm. years, multiple things have gone wrong. Um, Brendan Davis had just like a, a blip on the radar that turned out to be a season. Okay. So I, I just don't, I can't, I can't put him in the same basket as the other two guys. Now I hope the other two guys still develop and become great players. Amaya is at camp and, and seems to be healthy and yeah, he's had some freak injuries, but hopefully he can be the catcher of the future or one of the catchers of the future for the Cubs. I just don't see why Brendan Davis would be knocked off the list. I saw somebody else mention in the chat, uh, uh, Greg's going to sleep, mentioning PCA, Nico, Manny, Otani, Swanson. He's going through the potential list of guys. Oh, By the way, <laughs> in the Otani thing, I did hear Jeff Passan on uh, ESPN 1000 with the Waddle and Sylvie show yesterday saying he listed like five teams that he thinks could be landing spots for Otani and none of them were the Cubs. And so the <laughs> follow-up by Jeff Meller uh, on the radio was, hey, what about the North Side guys? Why, why not the Cubs? And he had a, he didn't, he put it this way. He said, he thinks the Cubs will try to be players for Otani, and they were a possible destination for him in the beginning. But if he's being honest and he list has to list out the names right now, who would be the most likely? He went with West Coast teams closer to Japan, closer to home. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's talking about the Giants, the Mariners, the Dodgers. Oh boy. You know, the Dodgers were at the top of his list. And then he threw in the Mets and Yankees because of the East Coast money. Right. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, I'm not saying the Cubs don't have a shot. I'm just saying they kind of fall in the in between of that. Right. It's like, yeah. And he also did point out what's the biggest contract the Cubs have ever offered. And, it was like, okay, well, you're talking about their biggest deals are Lester, Hayward, Dansby Swanson, and Soriano. <laughs> Soriano, but none of them have been over $200 million. Yeah. And Otani is going to potentially cost almost at three least. times that. You know? <laughs> it's, like, so. it's like he's at least going to get be a, or at least get a $300 million contract. Yeah. That's it. I mean, at least. Like if you get him oh. for less than $400, you're probably like, you're probably celebrating, you know what I mean? Um, but I think he's going to get well over 400. Um, Barbara, I disagree. The Cubs, any team in baseball could use Otani. He's not overrated. Uh, he I is one of the yeah. greatest talents that I have ever seen on a baseball diamond, being able to pitch the way he does while also hitting the way that he does. It's insane. And because of him, I hope that we see more two-way players. Um Nazir Mule, if you want to talk about Cubs prospects, that's a guy that, for right now, they're letting him try to oh, be yeah. a two-way player. We'll see. But I, uh, you know, again, I, I, the Otani thing, I'm not going to get up for, and I'm not surprised that Passon said that. But the guy can dream. Oh yeah, uh, hey, I'm not telling you how to cub Cody. Vibe, hashtag vibe with us. I'm, I'm not yeah. saying even he. Didn't I'll dream say it. about it. Let me dream yeah. about it. You even know what I mean. <laughs> Even Passon said it's not impossible. Like yeah. they'll be, I think they'll be in the mix. He just thinks when it's all said and done, one of those other five mm -hmm. teams or so probably has a better chance. If you has asked him for the chance, well, those are now, the teams you know, that we, always we have do a have. Yeah, we got we got Saya chirping in his ear. Oh, so well, that that doesn't hurt. After the offseason we just witnessed with you know with Judge getting all that money going back to the Yankees, Correa, that saga, Trey Turner going to the Phillies, all is like I think anything's possible. I don't think before the offseason, I don't think anyone 
thought Trey Turner was going to the Phillies right away until after rumors mm-hmm. came out. And then no one thought Correa was going back to the Twins. I know that there was a lot of implications because of why, but I'm no one thought that. Right. Um, you know, I there's it's it's what February 2023, and this is gonna be a thing that we're talking about in December, probably. Like, let let some time play out. If the Cubs show that they're good and competitive, maybe that maybe Otani's like, ah, go play with my friend Saya, go play in a market that you know is 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 big, middle midwest. Uh, you know, you Darvish probably say some nice things to him about it, about Chicago too. I, I don't know. I'm just saying that I'm not, again, I'm not getting up for it, but I'll, I'll dream about it for yeah. sure. And, and what <laughs> helps is if the Cubs have a, a run to the postseason this year, if the Cubs start to show what Wrigley field can really be like again, and the whole Wrigleyville experience can be like, um, hashtag vibe with us. And, uh, I, I will say Passon did also point out Barbara saying he's not going to be worth the contract. Well, that's a whole nother story. Like a lot of players that, that, aren't worth the contract. <laughs> yeah. A lot of players aren't going to be worth the contract. And, and of course the, the knock on whatever huge deal, if anybody's going to make one about Otani, you can't say he's not a great player. He's a great player. The question would be, will he be able to maintain being a two way player at that level as he gets into his upper thirties and be like how, how long will you be paying him to be that great player? Yeah. And when does it stop? It's, you know, it, it goes down to like Pujols. Like at what point was he just another player? And mm. that's, that's I all mean, debatable because the, the, only, the marketing the only stuff that, factors in too. True. The only thing that like gives me some hope that maybe he won't be nearly as expensive as like a lot of people were, are projecting mm-hmm. is that he will be 30 next year. And so I don't know. Yeah, maybe, I don't maybe, think Cohen, maybe he gets, maybe he gets, <laughs> like the money, like a 400 to $500 million deal, but it won't be as many years. I, if you want me to like tell you exactly what I would be happy with is if they could, if the Cubs could get him on like a, you know, a seven or eight year deal instead of a 10 year deal uh, with however much money you got to do it. Like I, that's the only thing like that, that if you ask me what would worry me about it, it's just yeah. the fact that, you know, he's going into the back half of his prime uh, in the back end of his career. But the, th- the difference between him is like, OK, well, if he's if the pitching trends down, but yeah. he's still hitting, then you got yeah, that still DH. and vice versa. You know what I mean? Right. Like it'd be very surprising to see both talents that he has completely go away at the same time. So, right, right, right. It, it, it's going to be totally fascinating to see. I the only thing oh, I yeah. will say is that I. If he's going to go all the way to the East Coast, we know Cohen doesn't care how old he is. He'll pay him eighty million dollars yeah. until he's a hundred years old. Right. <laughs> I mean, he's he's his whole rotation is as old as I am practically. Like, yeah. They're, I mean, they're based good, off but they're old. Based off what we've heard from Tom yesterday and everything, I mean, it's not even that I don't think Tom would do it. I I just I. I just don't know if the years will add up to like what Jed Hoyer wants. So right. I think it goes in a little bit of both. Like is, is Tom willing to go over that certain amount? And then, and is Jed willing to give a 10 year contract, you know? And like they've said, like we talked about all off season, they don't want to go multi-year contracts or like double, like a double digit year contract. You know what I mean? We, so I, yeah. It's it'll be like we like we keep saying it's going to be a very interesting like uh thing storyline walk to watch play out. I mean shit. I mean I still think the Angels could potentially trade him at the deadline, and I I we're gonna be we're gonna be watching that. And I'm I don't know a team that's like right there ready to win. It would have to be the team that he would go to because I just don't think teams are going to give up the prospect capital for a rental. He's not Juan. He's not the same as Juan Soto's situation. It's it's different. It's literally a rental. So that will be interesting to watch play out if the Angels are out of it, which history shows that they'll probably be out of it. Michael Collada was blocked. What is going on? He said, "Excuse me for a second. What what is going on in the chat? My People attacking Collada. I'm, I'm let us never... do it right now. How to unblock somebody? It was a, it was an honest mistake. Don't worry about it, <laughs> Joey. <laughs> Joey." <laughs> Here's what happened. Joey was like this. 
He's, and he's bored of us talking about I was, hit the keyboard I was, was trying blind. to broadcast his comment, and I accidentally clicked block. I didn't even know. It was not. Out. It was not intentional because you were killing our vibe on the Shohei <laughs> Otani conversation. That was yeah. not intended, Michael Collada. We just want to let you know. Uh, <laughs> Fernando, always good with a super chat, says Judge contract would have done the same. Otani is better. Yeah. I would rather have Otani, but mm-hmm. enough on that. Uh, Cody, what about a DraftKings pick of the week? Do you have anything oh. you're targeting from our friends at DraftKings? By the way, mm. I should point out that my check for my Super Bowl winnings arrived yesterday from DraftKings. Oh. Congratulations. Cash baby out straight into the account. Now you can go buy yourself a new pair of J's. Or sell the other ones and add to that account. So that's <laughs> we're going to talk about that tomorrow uh, when I get to the office. Okay. Um, yeah, tonight I'm riding Providence plus seven and a half. I actually threw it into the discord, the sports betting channel for, uh, the CHGO discord, which has become a vibe. Um, our friend Gary's not in the chat today, but he's been up in the, been, been up in there, uh, asking for advice. I tried to tell him to take Michigan state last night, but he's an IU fan, uh, die hard. I had to send him $12 and 50 cents. Cause I lost a sandwich bet to him over the weekend. I. Uh, Tough. It was a tough look for him, but uh, you know, I tonight I am riding Providence plus seven and a half. I, I, and like I said, you can become a diehard and you can get my bets early because I threw it right in the Discord. Uh, honestly, at about eleven thirty p.m. last night, <laughs> as I was laying in bed. So, <laughs> of course, I'm you are. riding. I'm riding the Friars at UConn tonight. Ed Cooley as an underdog. I will take it every time. So. Uh, for the rest of those bets, CHGO bets daily, I think three o'clock today, right after the show, basically half hour after the show. So come join me and Sean. We'll have our bets and we'll talk all about DraftKings and why it's my favorite app when I wake up every morning. Very nice. Uh, we're hoping that Ryan Herrera is going to be able to join us here before the end of the podcast. Uh, I think he will. I know he was working on some stuff. Oh, look at this. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's wearing, wearing, he's wearing the hoodie. Right now. Yeah, yeah, we're all wearing the hoodie. Hashtag vibe with us, vibe with us. We are vibing right now. (laughs) He's even got the hat on. Look at this. It's it's as windy as it's been since I've been down here. When Ryan's dressed like we're we sent him to Alaska to cover the Cubs, this is a little out of control. I'm actually feeling like we're ahead of our situation. You can't really see the logo right here, but you can see it up here. (laughs) Oh, look at at Luke sucking his ice. I mean, he wouldn't even go outside. He wouldn't even drive to the office today. <laughs> All right. So, Ryan is uh, – it is supposed to be windy, right? Like 40-mile-an-hour winds in Arizona. I heard people describing it as uh, April-like Chicago weather. Is that, does it feel like opening day out there that way? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, opening day might feel a little colder, but it, it, it's, it's about that. The wind is – yeah, it's bad. It's cold. I think it's, like, it's not as cold when the wind isn't blowing, but – the wind is constantly blowing, so it really doesn't matter. And Ryan's probably wearing Hawaiian underneath there. We'll see how long we can hold out with the uh, with the audio because the wind will uh, no doubt blast that microphone. That, that, yeah, the little mini mic. It, it was doing all right. So, Ryan, uh, who were you talking to today? What was going on out there? Um, so we actually just uh, talked to Christopher Morrell. Um, you know, he got here Monday. You know, whenever all well, position players showed up, he was here. Uh, but we got to talk to him today. Uh, basically, the main thing is, you know, he has this big opportunity in front of him, right? Like, he he had a very good start to the year, and then it, it wasn't as good uh, the second half of the season. The team started to figure him out. You know, he was striking out a lot more. Uh, he had, you know, some of the play, the places they were putting him defensively. Obviously, third base is one of them that where he, he struggled. Uh, and... He, he spent a lot of the offseason focusing on those kind of things. He said that he, you know, went – he didn't focus on one position specifically during the offseason, but he definitely worked – you know, and one day he'd work on infield, one day it'd be outfield, some days both. Uh, but he was always constantly working defensively um, just because there were positions where he wasn't – you know, he didn't have a great year. Um, and he's going to be one of those guys that if he's not – for whatever reason, the starting third baseman for them this year. Um, he's going to be a guy that bounces around a lot, and they're going to rely on him. So um, that was where a lot of his offseason work came from, is just defensively getting better at all those positions he's 
you know, kind of being asked to play. And they, you, know, the, you hope the offense comes along as well, the strikeouts, um, that, he, that he just develops a little bit better of an eye or a little bit better approach to play, uh, and those strikeouts come down too. So, it, you know, he's 23 going on 24. A lot of development time still to come, but um, just him focusing on, on getting better as a major leaguer is kind of just the main takeaway from that. You know what I think is funny about Morrell is that a lot of times fans and media fall in love with the the guy with the chip on his shoulder, right? That storyline of this guy's angry and he's going to prove everyone. He's going to outgrind everybody. Cubs fans fell in love with Christopher Morrell because Christopher Morrell was the big smile and handing out hugs and uh, slaps on the ass more than any player you've ever seen in baseball history. I mean, he was saying hello to the home plate umpire. He was shaking hands with the catcher. He'd get down to first. He was fist bumping with the, the first baseman that was down there. It, it was like the exact opposite. I'm just, I think we lost Ryan for a second, but I'm curious, you know, what his, if his mental approach is changed at all because of the ups and downs of last season, right? I was saying like, he, he was such a, he was such a positive breath of fresh air last year. Like you'd never seen a player like him in the majors. He had Sammy used to blow the kisses and stuff, but Morrell was this happy go lucky guy. Has he changed it all? because of the situation he's in going into the season. I'd, I'd hate to see it change his personality. No, no, I definitely don't see that that's true or anything. I, I think he still has the same personality because, you know, even you look at last year, he, he had the same personality, fiery, love of the game, just love to be there when he started. And then he still had that even when he was going through his struggles later on in the season. So I don't think you know, whatever happened has affected him at all. Uh, I, actually, I do think it's kind of motored him to be – you know, obviously an even better player, but to kind of keep that same mentality because that's, you know, who he can be, right? The, the player that he was at the beginning of the season, the first month or so that he was in the big leagues, is who he can be. Uh, I think he keeps that same mentality, that drive, that work ethic, um, and he'll, he'll – I don't, I don't see it changing who he is, his personality at all. Yeah. Who else uh, Who else do you talk to? you get a ch- chance to talk to Rossi today, or have you heard from the skipper yet? Yeah, we did talk to Rossi today, and it was one of those things – to, to go back to Morales, just Rossi understand he understands that there are different position battles going on at camp, right? He knows that Christopher Morel is going to be involved in at least a couple of them. Uh, but he, as far as that, as far as he goes, you know, Rossi talked about again knowing that he's going to be a guy that he can, he should be able to rely on, you know, through really all over the field, um, and that's kind of the message that he gave is like, you know, you. You're young. You still have a lot of development and room to grow, and but you had a good year. You just got. You, it was just kind of like the the you know, the message was just we're going to rely on you in a lot of different ways, and we know you can do it. So we'll keep working, kind of you know, kind of keep grinding. Um, obviously, earn that spot again, uh, but show us that you can keep doing it. How you know, the way the way they know we can do it. Cool, cool. Um, back to Morel. Do you uh do you know? Uh, like in camp, at least, where he's been, like I guess taking ground balls or you know sl- snagging fly balls or anything. Like where we're off, where most yeah, it's just third. I mean, it's just been all over the place. Really? Um, it's it's another one that's like you know spring training just started. <laughs> still got a you still got you know games don't we'll start know for a couple more days. Games, start. <laughs> games will start for a couple more days. You got a month till the regular three over a month till the regular season. Um, where he's play, where he's taking fly balls or taking grounds, he's gonna be doing a lot of it again because yeah. the Cubs still kind of view him as a guy who could do it uh, in a few different ways. So um, you may see him start to focus a little bit more on one position or a couple of positions as it gets going. But um, you know, we'll give it some time. <laughs> It'll take some time to get there for sure. I'm impatient. <laughs> uh, De La Cruz is asking in the chat, "Where is Ryan's Hawaiian parka?" That is a good question. We should have a CHGO. Hawaiian parka might be something we could distribute. That would be great. Uh, we, you guys should. You guys are. You guys are in the office. Uh, whenever the next time you guys are in the office, you bring that up to Jake and see. Uh, I'll take. One. I'll definitely have them. I've been talking to our shirt guy Eric out at DMVR about CHGO Cub swag. So I'm hoping. Nice. I'm hoping nice. that you know my assertiveness gets us something before opening day. No, not a tease here or anything. I mean, you know what's crazy about this feed? For the people watching on uh, YouTube, not only is it cold, Ryan's going from light to darkness. Like, 
<laughs> daylight, nighttime, daylight, nighttime. It's like the whole day is just cycling through in hyperspeed. I was uh, I was shooting a text. Uh, may, may have a special guest. Oh, he's working on some stuff. Working on some stuff. I see. Okay. May have a special guest coming in. I just texted Seth first, and so if that person can get here in the next few minutes, I'll, I'll stick on with you guys to see if that person comes through and enjoy. Okay. Uh, oh, they would actually come on live. Just yeah. Why not? Just step right in. All right. right. Okay. Um, well, while we're while we're waiting, uh, you were texting me earlier this morning about Max Bain. Did you go see him? I have not seen Max Bain yet, but <sighs> I saw a picture of him. Rich Biesterfeld had a photo of him. I do have a question. Here. We ran we ran just the um the uh, just a clip of Jameson Tyone talking about that slider. Hold on, maybe you you probably can hear me better if I go like this. And um. <laughs> I have a question, Ryan. I heard that he was into our CHGO swag a little bit. Is it possible that some of the Cubs players are now heading to the CHGO locker to try and get swag? I mean, it's definitely possible. He, he did tell me he had the, one of the uh, CHGO Bears crew necks on, and he did mm -hmm. tell me that he liked it. Um, so we'll see. Maybe we got more things in the works that way. Uh, but he, he, said, he said he may need one, so um, maybe we'll bring, we'll bring him one. We'll I feel like fun. I feel like we should ship down some of these uh, camo sweatshirts yeah. for days like this. Guys are going to throw them over their jersey. We get free advertising, just run around the field. I mean, what are we doing? Come on! Uh, you should I will say behind it. there's, you know, the <laughs> um, the the Cubs are still talking to companies about the patches on the jerseys. There it is. <laughs> the patch they want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I'm just gonna say that'd be a good patch to have on a jersey, right? So you never the know. CHGO logo, like the, <laughs> this, this one exactly right here. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm, I, come on, you're gonna tell us who the the potential live guest would be? Well, I don't want to. I don't want to like make promises and then everyone gets let down. Um, it's Clark the Cub, isn't it? Is, <laughs> is it Clark the Cub? Not Clark. It's not is, is Clark, it a player? Is Clark the Cub even there? <laughs> is it a player? A media member? Uh, give us a I, hint. I can't. It's not a media member. There's your hint. Okay. Not a media member, but he didn't say it was necessarily a player either. I would love it if it's the Cubs uh, bullpen catcher because he follows us on Twitter. Uh, ah. Garrett Lloyd, I think his name is. Yeah. Um, yeah. He DM'd me like a month ago. Said he liked the show and all that. Oh, oh well, well, uh, maybe it's on. Danny, it the, new him, cool. head, the new head, the new head, the new head clubby. I heard Danny was promoted. It's not the new head of the clubhouse. Uh, this this special guest is gonna have to duck down. He's not, uh, he's a little taller than me. Everyone, well, welcome Max Bain to the show. What's up, guys? Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's go. Oh, let's go. How are we? He's I'm there. good. We're good. We're good. Everything uh, everything good up there? Yeah, we want to know yeah. if it's as cold as Ryan is making it seem. No. <laughs> Oh, we do. Come on, we do the Midwest every winter. This ain't nothing, right? I mean, I'm, he's I'm from Michigan, so like breezy. this is nothing to him. It's just, it's just breezy. It's I promise it's not that bad. I'm out here in a hoodie though. It's not like I have a winter jacket. It's just a hoodie that I have the hat on, but it's a company hat. I mean, yeah. it's a park. Max, do you think players would wear our CHGO swag if we started sending some out there? I know I would. Oh, oh wait a minute! That's a that's a confirmation. That's a confirmation. We of gotta send Max some CHGO swag, man. That, that way, whenever Absolutely. the season starts, when uh, Rich gets more pictures of him throughout the spring, all that, we need it. You gotta have those pics of me like walking in the clubhouse wearing the CHGO stuff, like handed, where I'm kind of like looking off, like I'm the main character in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we need. Or do you guys have any last camera? questions for Max? Right. Yeah, I just want to know how he's feeling so far early in spring. Yeah, how's the like, spring, man? It's been great, man. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. Uh, you know, we worked on command pretty much all winter. So to see that, uh, you know, kind of, I guess, look uh, or come to fruition, if you will, uh, has been really good so far. You know, I had the first live yesterday, attacked the zone. So everything's good, man. Everything's good. Feeling comfortable, feeling feeling confident, man. All is good. When we, uh, when we talked beginning of the offseason, you were all about, you know, hanging out with your girlfriend, your dog, and just, like, resting and, like, you know, putting baseball to the side for a little bit. Do you feel rejuvenated? Do you feel like you're ready to, like, really get back out there and shove it down some throats, man? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it was the best thing for me. Uh, yeah. It was funny. I told my parents right before I left. Uh, we didn't have MLB Network at the house. So pretty much the only time that I thought about baseball was when I was training. Uh, wow. And to have that separation from the game is something I haven't had in, in quite some time. So uh, it's, it's great to be back down here with the guys, uh, be around, be part of the team camaraderie again. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty freaking awesome, man. So I'm, uh, I'm very happy to be back. All right. Well, this is cool having you on. We appreciate it. And, you know, I have created, Max, this new hashtag that is sweeping America, hashtag vibe with us for CHGO. It's taking over. But I'm thinking of one specifically for young Cubs pitchers like yourself. If we could start one, shove with us. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. I'll use that uh, when I get myself one of those CHGO, or CHGO hoodies you got on. I'm going to use yeah. that as soon as I get that. 100%. <laughs> Shovel I love absolutely. I'm gonna pump. The, I'm gonna pump up the brand. I got you. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate that, man. All right, guys. We'll catch you soon. All right. Thanks, Max. Hey, thanks, Ryan. Thank appreciate you guys. it. Stay warm out there. Stay warm. Yeah. <laughs> that was in, that was awesome. That, that was, was probably the that, best. That was the best moment of the off season outside of the all the best signings. <laughs> yeah. Well, that and my two hashtags, shove with yeah. us and vibe with us, have really <laughs> created a whole off season buzz. But. A, the fact that all three of us were wearing the hoodie. And then B, as right. soon as you asked, is it Max? Have you seen Max Bain today? Ryan was like, Yeah. He did <laughs> kind of hide I instantly it. instantly knew he it was Max Bain. Yeah. He did kind of hide it. I'll give him some credit there. But we have to get him on for, uh, you know, a, you know, a full pod or for a couple segments. Yeah. Uh, you know, without Ryan having to hold his mini mic next to his name or something like that. Or maybe, who knows? Maybe Ryan's going to sit down with him and, and talk to him about whatever. Um, right. But uh, he's just a great dude, man. I, If there's any prospect in the Cubs system that I am cheering for the most, it is him. He is, he's just a really good dude. So I'm wishing him nothing but the best going into the, the season. We all are. And then we want to get him the swag so he can walk yes. around all season. We got to right get him. Now, Ryan is asking him, Max, we wear our swag. If I, what size would you like in that hoodie? <laughs> You're going to have to text him or have Ryan ask him what's I'll, I'll pay for the new hoodie. You ask whatever, if, if the boxes won't pay for it, you tell me what it is. I'll, I'll send Max Bain a, a CHGO hoodie Hell yeah. so that we can get somebody out there in Arizona other than Ryan. When Ryan comes Ryan home, yeah, yeah, we need somebody wearing our gear. So right. we need a size, right? Mm -hmm. He's a Ryan, guy. He's gonna take I, a I sent Ryan extra large. I sent Ryan Max's phone number. I also have Max's phone number, so uh, we will, uh, you know, we'll we'll be in contact. I, honestly, like, as soon as the show's over, you should say that in the chat or in the Slack, and, and let that's him right. Know. <laughs> right, we got to go. Joey's Real busy quick. today. He's got a lot of stuff going on. Real quick, yeah. You know, <clears throat> my apologies to Michael Collada. He is back. We have fixed it. We've righted those wrongs. I obviously, did not mean that. You know. One of my favorite guys in across the whole CHO, any any show, Bulls, Bears, one of my favorite commenters. So, Michael, that's my <laughs> fault. Hashtag Collada with us is how we do He's it. He's back, baby. He's, He's back. back. He's uh, been allowed back it's in. Always, it, it was like Joey said, it was a it was a small mistake. So unintentional wronging. We apologize. We want and of all of in all of the Godfather's like negative comments, I don't even think he had any his no. He, he didn't even have anything that anything. negative today. So, no, of all the days for him to get blocked, I mean, yeah, a couple rickets slams. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna try and leave the show with Max Bain vibes. Hashtag yes. vibe with us. Hashtag shove with us. Thanks for checking out the CHGO Cubs podcast presented by DraftKings, America's top rated sportsbook. Make sure you download the app. Use the promo code CHGO. We'll see you back here live one twenty on Thursday. Until then, fly the W.